Hello, Internet. Uh, so, I have recently moved, and I don't have my desktop set up or, or any of my normal recording equipment. I'm literally, like, under a blanket at a laptop <laughs> to make the audio quality anything remotely resembling good. But despite these crazy conditions, I just had to make a video because of all this craziness, everyone losing their mind about any framework, uh, any framework 8, and how it's so much faster, but is it as fast as Dapper? Can it replace Dapper? Blah, blah, blah. This is the thing everyone is saying. Um, I say everyone. The small, whatever, niche of us who make C-sharp YouTube videos. Um, but this is a topic. Uh, and if you haven't seen Nick, Nick Chapsis in general, definitely check him out. He does a lot of really cool videos. Um, a lot of smart stuff. He's a super smart guy. Uh, but I, I have a complaint about about kind of this angle he took um, that, that, I, that I just was like, it was driving me crazy after I saw this video like all day. So, so I was like, I have to make a video. So here's his results. This is Entity Framework Core 8. Um, and we can see EF here. It's taken like 40, 45 microseconds. But Dapper, oh my gosh, only seven. Um, and then somehow when you've got multiple things, he kind of talks about this, but when you get multiple results instead of one result, somehow the difference is less. Interesting, curious, how could this be? Uh, but Regardless, the point is, um, Dapper is still faster, and so any framework core is not good enough. Um, the thing that that bugs me about this, so he he made he took great care to do the performance testing in the right way, which was to isolate as much as possible just the performance of Dapper itself versus EF core itself. So that means not talking to a real database, just using an in-memory database. It's, of course, not behind an API. Um, so this really is a measure of the pure query building and execution. Um, as much as possible, everything else has been removed from the test. But that, I think, is the problem, because if, if you're debating about using Entity Framework or Dapper and, and looking at these numbers, I think you're missing the point of, like, these things talk to a real database. Here, for example, is a real database. I have set up a MySQL database locally. This is how I'm going to run my unit tests. And I'm going to fetch this first blog post with uh, Douglas Adams' uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy quote. Um, doesn't matter. We won't look at that. And I want to see, because watching this video, the thought I kept having was, OK, cool, but what about when I have to do the round trip to the database? That's the slow part. That's the part that takes a long time. This database is locally. Uh, hosted, right? It's on the same machine as my as my C sharp application, so so that's actually even not a great test. In reality, this would be further away, um, but still, that makes it an interesting test because if the you know how many microseconds are going to be added here, if it's you know only fifty microseconds, then okay, Dapper is looking pretty good. But what if it's five hundred microseconds? What if it's five thousand microseconds? And then you're you know getting excited about a difference of thirty out of five thousand, right? That'd be nonsense. So. I have created some benchmarks here. Um, I'm going to get a blog post by ID using any framework, and I'm not even going to use any framework eight, where all the incredible, cool speed bonuses uh, apparently have been made. And I'm sure part of this is Microsoft, right? I mean, this stuff is partly the fault of Microsoft being like, "Whoa, it's so fast now, guys," and then people go, "Well, is it?" Um, but anyway, uh, I'm also going to get a blog post using Dapper. So here's the, you know, raw SQL, raw-ish. Um, it, it, yeah. Um, and, you know, you might say, oh, Ben, you should use find. That's a little faster. I mean, whether it will be in this context, I don't really know. But, but anyway, I'm not even trying to do anything particularly speedy or clever here. I'm just using very vanilla, bog standard, any framework. Let's just get the first thing we find or default, um, you know, with, with some link. And let's run the comparison and see how those work. So let me make sure I am in release mode, run the benchmarks, um, and... Oh, it's because I don't have the dual monitor set up, you just have to watch me pause. So I'm going to pause, and then I'll be right back after the benchmarks have run. All right, I'm back. Get this thing out of the way. Don't look at that. Um, all right, let's look at the results of the unit test. Here we go. Or sorry, not unit test, uh, benchmark. <laughs> um, so here we go. We've got 500 microseconds and 548 microseconds for EF. So we have saved, let's say, 10%, right? Um, we, we About... Yeah, about 10%, um, which is pretty good, um, you know, for Dapper. Like, it, it is faster. Uh, but the speed bonus that we get by switching to Dapper is much less, right? It's not a third. It's not whatever this fraction is. I can't do that in my brain, um, right? But, it, it, what, I mean, this is an order of magnitude different, right? Uh, this is not 
we have saved very little by switching to Dapper. Um, I am not impressed by these speed differences. Same with the memory. You're like, oh my goodness, five times the RAM? Like, no, plus, um, I don't know, a quarter, I guess, which is which is still an amount, right? I mean, 25%, this, this is still a big difference. But I want to point out a couple things. Um, we have this API locally. Uh, or sorry, this, this MySQL database locally. Uh, by the way, I would have preferred Postgres. I just don't have it installed on the... Um, the laptop. That's a more popular database, so, so that comparison would probably be more, I don't know, more convincing to a lot of people. So before I go further, I would encourage you run this yourself and, and see what the difference is. The other big difference, something that's not being done here, is an API call. They're like we haven't wrapped this up in authentication and authorization and um, you know deserializing JSON into right all these other things that use reflection and there's a lot of other of, of overhead that that we're not even seeing here. But even so. We're seeing this difference is so small, um, or so much smaller, I guess I should say, compared to what's going on here. Okay, so we might still say 10%, that's worth switching. Let's let's switch to something else for 10% gain. But there's a more important way to get the gain. We can get closer to the numbers that Nick Chapsis is getting by doing what Nick Chapsis is doing and not making a round trip. The right way to get more speed is to use caching. Um, so I have another benchmark that I've commented out sneakily below, and this uses an in-memory cache and still entity framework. And I want to compare this against these. Actually, maybe um, let's make one that uses, you know, since we're here, uh, let's make one that uses Dapper, and, and we'll do a proper comparison. So um, here we would get. Sorry, where do we get the blog post here? Um, ba -ba -ba. And we'll put that down here. Yep. And this would be blog post. So here we go. Um, oh, what, what did I do there? Right, sorry, we don't need a new variable for that. Okay, so here's here's the methodology here. I mean, pretty standard um, caching technique. You, you would probably, in a real-world situation, have this abstracted away somewhere. But, but this is the thing you would do. You're saying, okay, here's the post ID you passed in. And by the way, I just put this here so that there was a memory allocation that is more representative of a real world scenario where an API call is coming in. You're saying, hey, I'm going to have a long. It's real. It's here. It's taking up bytes. It's not much, but I just wanted to try and make things a little closer to a real life scenario. Um, so anyway, here's the post ID. We try to get it out of the cache. This, by the way, is just a, um, I initialize it up here. It's a singleton for the purposes of this benchmark as it would be for an, an API, an ASP.NET Core um, server. So here's just a, a simple memory cache. Um, try and get the blog post. If we didn't get one, or, or sorry, if we did get one, return it. Uh, else, we didn't get one, then we need to look it up. And we store it in the cache if we were able to find it, and we will find it. So let's see what the speed difference is here, um, because I'm willing to bet that we're going to get a much bigger increase than 10%. So I'm going to start this, and before the benchmarks themselves run, I'll pause, and I'll be right back after the benchmarks are done. All right, finally back. I know it was a very short period of time for you, but it took a little bit longer for me. Um, so this is interesting. <laughs> now I think it is worth noting too that I am on a laptop, which I'm again, you know, mentioned, which is going to be much less powerful than whatever Nick's desktop or my own desktop. Um, oh, that'd be so interesting to run my own, to run the same benchmarks on my computer and, and just get a sense of the computer power. But anyway, we're, we're getting off topic. Here is what you actually care about: squabbling over whether or not you should be using Entity Framework or Dapper. Who cares? If you want speed. This is what you care about. You cache. You do something that matters. You avoid the round trip, the expensive part that your real-world application is otherwise doing. Um, and I'm not saying like I don't care which was used. Honestly, I, like I don't have a, a, a horse in this EF versus Dapper fight. I've used both, and they're both great. Um, I, you know, I've been programming for a long time. I know how to write SQL. Um, I can do the joins. Um, but having, you know, I don't know, live through ORMs coming out and becoming popular. I also love ORMs. They do great things, that, you know, migrations, all these great features that, that um, are there. Love it. Uh, the Microsoft took a surprisingly long time to, to get to, honestly. The PHP world was, was ahead for a while. Uh, no longer, no longer interested in doing PHP. Um, which is another funny thing to me that, that stands out. It's like, again, like worrying about this tiny difference we use you know, Facebook on 20 year old hardware PHP was fine. Now there's C sharp. We're already orders managed to be faster. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, the point is, that this difference does not impress me. This difference is, and it sh I, I don't think it should impress you either. The speed difference for just 
the query building itself is insignificant compared to other things you could be doing. Um, the database rounds trip is, is a real thing, right? No one uses an ORM without a database. And maybe you do. Maybe you've got a really weird, fun use case where you do do that. And you're like, oh, actually, I can hijack an ORM to do this fun thing without a database. And that's great for me. In that case, maybe this matters to you. But that is the minority. That is the minoriest of minorities. Um, or, you know, being as huge as like Google where every microsecond counts. You know, there, there are those situations. But for the most of us, by and large, your time is so much better spent worrying about other things like, are you caching properly? Um, and what is the speed of, what's the overhead of the API? I haven't tested that here. Um, I don't know, that would be a whole other things to set up, but I would be curious to know. And, and if you're building a web API and if you're using an ORM, you probably are. Um, yeah, you, know, you might be doing some desktop application. I'm sorry for you if that's the case. <laughs> the desktop world is a little, a little weird. Um, but uh, but yeah, actually check your environment and see where you know where are the what really matters. You know, does switching to Dapper is that going to get you anything, or is adding caching to some API endpoint going to get you something, um, and or is you know, switch to minimal APIs, and how much does that shave off versus using in a you know more traditional ASP.NET Core? Um, there are there are bigger things than Entity Framework versus Dapper. And I want to point out again, this is EF Core seven that I have used. This is eight where he's getting um, this difference. Um, you don't even need eight to say I don't care. <laughs> I think is is kind of my attitude, like. Dapper versus EF, whatever. So anyway, I don't know. Again, that was just on my brain, driving me crazy. Um, I, again, I love the Nick Chaps' videos. You'll learn a lot by watching his videos, or at least I have. Um, definitely check them out. Um, but I do think sometimes he goes way too focused on these problems. That it's like numbers are very compelling, and they are for me too. And as a game player too, you're right. You're like, oh, plus one percent damage. I gotta have that. Um, <laughs> so numbers are very compelling, and when you can make a number go down, that's exciting. But you need to make the right numbers go down. These numbers don't matter. Uh, these numbers, adding caching, that's what matters. So anyway, I'm done rambling. Um, I just had to get a video out. Thank you very much for watching um, my pet game videos. I'm still making probably way less popular than this video is. Um, but if you want to see how to make a pet game using Blazor, which is probably full of performance issues. Um, yeah, those are still out, and I pre-recorded I pre a bunch, so even though I don't have my normal recording set up, um, there are still, I think, a couple weeks of videos um, backlogged, so that's nice. Anyway, thank you much for watching, very much, uh, and goodbye.